One of the most interesting aspects of this case, as far as I'm concerned, has been to watch and observe two people with courage fighting a case and to see that even with limited resources, even unable to bring all the evidence you want to to court, you can win significant victories um, through a belief in what you're saying, a belief in free speech, uh, and the courage to continually put your, your case forward. Dave and Helen are an extraordinary couple, in my opinion. When I first met them, uh, they really didn't know very much about the law at all, and they certainly didn't know very much about libel law. But they've worked away and grappled away with mountains of evidence and really difficult legal concepts. And between them, they form now a very good team. And now if we have a discussion about a point that's cropped up or we have to draft something, they're very quick um, with the arguments and they're able to draft stuff on their own and argue it on their own. And um, I think they'll make very good lawyers uh, when they've finished. I'm encouraging them to do that. The inside view on the trial in the legal profession is that this case shows the absurdity of the libel laws and that after this case things are going to have to change. You cannot have the longest case in civil history and in all likelihood criminal history um, where one side has a top legal team and the others have no resources whatsoever. So whatever the result um, this case will change the future of libel law. One of the problems with the law as it is now, i.e. that there's no legal aid um, for defendants and you have to have a lot of money to hire libel lawyers, is that there's a tendency on the part of those that have a lot of money to suppress criticism from those that don't because it's not a question of whether you're telling the truth or not that matters. It's whether you have um, the courage or the money to defend what you say in court. And in my experience, many, many people who um, can back up what they're saying, nevertheless, don't defend themselves in libel proceedings because they fear the costs so much. One striking part of this case has been the extent to which McDonald's have been prepared to infiltrate um, the group London Greenpeace to find out information and the full picture has only emerged as the case has gone on and it's quite clear that um, McDonald's put spies within the group um, who were collating all sorts of information. Uh, it, it emerged also that those people were playing their full part in the group and were doing everything that it was alleged Dave and Helen were doing to promote the leaflet in question including handing it out and putting it in envelopes. Uh, and at that point it became obvious uh, that they were fully participating and that therefore they ought to uh, play their part in, in paying any damages, if there are any, to McDonald's. One of the important aspects of the case is that um, many of the issues were not widely debated 10, 15 years ago, but they are now. Um, an example is junk food. Um, that's a major public interest issue um, these days. Um, the profile's been raised by people such as Dave and Helen. Um, and it's notable that the EU is now beginning to take notice and take action and is threatening that it may even contemplate legislation to deal with advertising of junk food to children if the industry doesn't regulate itself in the near future. Dave and Helen's case has always been um, uh, very important to me um, from when I first met them and um, working with them through the difficult days of, of, of the trial. Um, and um, it's extremely um, important um, that it's gone all the way to the European Court of Human Rights and it'll be one of the most important decisions that court makes. It'll be a, a landmark for them and, and for me. McDonald's um, can never have dreamt when they decided to bring um, proceedings um, against protesters um, on a Saturday afternoon in North London that they were going to end up 15 years later um, with a case in the European Court of Human Rights, the most important um, and influential court in the whole of Europe, um, with a major challenge to the entire libel laws um, and 15 years of adverse publicity for McDonald's. 
it's important to appreciate that um, if the European um, Court finds that um, Dave and Helen's trial was unfair, um, the government can't ignore that judgment. It's got to do something about it. Um, and it must therefore think about changing the law itself um, to put right whatever the European Court has said caused the problem. If Dave and Helen win in Strasbourg and um, the government is forced to respond by changing the law, that will be a major victory, not only for Dave and Helen, but for everybody that's argued for many years that the libel laws inhibit free speech. Uh, it'll be tremendous vindication of 15 years of legal struggle. When you have a legal system that doesn't operate fairly because there's a huge imbalance between the parties, um, justice could never be achieved, um, however hard the individual judge uh, tries in any particular case. Um, and that's why um, the proceedings in Strasbourg are a challenge really to the system uh, rather than a challenge to the decision of the individual judge in the High Court. One of the ways in which this case is um, affected me it is in the way it's humbled me and other lawyers. Um, it shows that um, ordinary individuals committed to their cause can grapple with um, legal issues that we pretend are very complicated um, and can win against the odds. Um, so it's been very important to me um, as an individual and as a lawyer um, in that way. Yeah, I've been doing a lot of death row work cases from the Caribbean and we've established some really important principles there um, about not sentencing everybody to death. Um, I also got made a Queen's Council, um, which is um, odd since I often used to um, propose the abolition of the monarchy. Did you win any awards? I believe you did. I was um, uh, awarded the Human Rights Law of the Year in 1990. Uh, no, in 2000. Do you want to do that again?